the basic organic chemistry has now been covered. Make sure you can name all the different possible functional groups and obviously compounds from the different families. Make sure you understand isomers and can write isomers if necessary. Remember there are structural isomers, there are also geometrical isomers. Make sure you can do both of those. Uh, what we're going to do now is come on to the, uh, the big molecules, the polymers, and the fact there are two different types of polymer. One are addition polymers and the other are condensation polymers. This video will be exclusively about the addition polymers and the next video will be the condensation ones. Now addition polymers involve alkenes. So if I have a double bond, whatever goes in those positions doesn't matter, the same thing applies. If I take an alkene and I take lots of them, n is simply a big number, when I polymerize the alkene, what I do is break the double bond. That allows an electron to be now present either side of this molecule, and that will then allow it to form a covalent bond with a neighbor, which also has that spare electron. So what you're going to form is a single bond. Oh, sorry, I'm not putting anything there yet. We're just going to keep those open and then what we're going to do is extend that to form the polymer. So if these were all hydrogens that would be ethene. The polymer would then be polyethene. Polythene uh, is a very very common polymer. We use it for things like plastic bags. We also use it for making harder plastics like say milk bottles. The difference between them is one is LDPE and the other one is HDPE. Now those terms hopefully you remember PE is polyethene. LD means low density and HD means high density. If you have low density this chain will have if you like lots of branches which essentially keeps it away from its neighbors, so then there's a lot of space inside and therefore it's low density. This makes it uh, a lot more flexible and sometimes see-through. So cling film, for example, or glad wrap, I think they call it in Australia. I'm sorry, I'm still in the UK. Glad wrap, cling film is see-through, very, very flexible. Um, plastic bags that you will get when you have stuff from the supermarket, they would also be low density polythene. On the other hand, if those polymer chains are pretty much unbranched, then they can pack closer together. This obviously makes a higher density plastic. And this would not be see-through, and this would be more rigid. And the classic example of the use here is milk bottles. So they can be opaque, so you can't see through them, and they're also much more rigid, obviously, which they need to be. Those are two examples of addition polymers. If I choose to put fluorines on all of those positions, then the polymer I make will have fluorines in all of these positions. Now, this is called tetrafluoroethene. And the polymer would be polytetrafluoroethene. It has a commercial name, and that is Teflon, which is the non-stick coating that we put on our frying pans. The reason it's non-stick is because carbon fluorine bonds are about as hard to break as they come. They're incredibly strong covalent bonds, so therefore nothing can break them, and if nothing can break them, then nothing can stick to them. So there is a very, very good example of um, another polymer, which is again an addition polymer. The other one the syllabus requires you to know is this one. Instead of ethene, we're going to use propene. That means we're going to put a CH3 there. Now, what I want you to be careful of, guys, is this. Let's say they give you the structure of propene as that. 
and they ask you to show the repeating unit in polypropene. What some people do is somehow they take a hydrogen off there, they take a hydrogen off there, and then they do this, and they say, there is your polymer. And of course, it's completely wrong. The double bond carbons are the ones that form the chain. This is simply a side group, like the flu fluorines were in the last example. So what we need to do, if you're given the structure of propene in a straight line, redraw it like that. And whatever you're given, if you're given, say, but1ene, if this is your monomer, CH, CH2, these are the two carbons that form the polymer chain. So therefore, draw that out again, show the two carbons, like so, and then you've got a hydrogen on this one and a CH2, CH3 unit. This is the, the part that repeats, so take away the double bond, put a bracket around it all, put a line coming out, and then there's your polymer, okay? So whatever alkene they might ask you to do, draw it out again, showing those two carbons on their own, if you like, and any side groups sticking up or down, as the case may be. So polypropene is again a very important polymer. It's used to make things like uh, bows, um, synthetic rope, and lots of other uses. But the fact is, you need to know a little bit more about it. The fact is, if this is the carbon backbone in polypropene, so these are all carbons now, carbon, carbon, as we know, Carbons which have single bonds to them are tetrahedrally arranged, so we get this zigzagging kind of um, uh, structure. Now, the methyl groups may go above, they may go below, they may go both above and below. And there are three possible ways this crystallizes. If the methyl groups are above and below and completely random, that gives a polymer called atactic polypropene. It's not particularly crystalline, and because of its irregular kind of shape, it would be low melting and stuff like that. It can't pack together very well. If, on the other hand, they're all on one side, like so, now remember, they won't be every carbon, so this carbon has one, that carbon doesn't. This carbon has one, that carbon doesn't, and so on. If they like that, then we call this isotactic. And this would be a much, much more crystalline form, because clearly now it's more regular, and they can therefore pack closer together. The third type is called syntactic, or syndiotactic, syntactic. And what you have with syntactic is they're on both sides, but again, they're regular. So you may have something like, um, let's have a look. Yeah, so if, if I take those off for the moment. So every other one, so this one might pop down, another one might pop up, and so on. So again, they are at regular intervals above and below the plane. Have a look at my, my booklet and you will see all three of them, or just simply Google image, three different types of polypropene, and you'll see the three different types there. This one is also crystalline, like the, the, like the isotactic, because it's a regular shape. Again, I don't think you need to know more than that. Hopefully, they won't test, you know, sort of stuff which is really not that important.